this video will serve as an introduction to discrete probability. First, let's look at Laplace's definition. And Laplace's definition actually is specific to events that are equally likely, have equally likely outcomes. So let's talk about a little bit of terminology. First of all, we're saying S is a finite sample space. Finite, of course, means that it's countable, it ends, it's not um, infinite. Sample space is all of the possible outcomes. So for instance, when I roll a die, the possible outcomes are one, two, three, four, five, six. That would be S, the sample space. A, a is an event where A is one of the events that belongs to the sample space. Then the probability of A is the number of elements A over the number of elements in S. So for instance, if I'm looking at the probability of six for the experiment of rolling a die, again, we write it P6, and that just tells us that six is the outcome that we're looking for. One of my items is a six out of six total in the sample space. So I want to look at a few more examples with you. And first, I want you to notice that my very first example to you actually doesn't have anything to do with Laplace's definition because they're not equally likely. And yet the concept is the same and we'll formalize that in our next video. But we're saying here that we have a bag of marbles that contains four green, three red, and two blue. And so again, I have nine total, four plus three plus two. So the probability of a green is that I have four out of nine. Probability of red is three out of nine, and I of course can reduce that. And probability of blue is two out of nine. So again, that's pretty straightforward and easy. Um, another somewhat harder question has to do with the probability when I roll two die. So this one's just a little bit harder than the last, but we're saying, what's the probability that when you roll two die, the sum of the die is three? So I know to roll a three, then I have to take, get a one and a two, but I can also get a two and a one. So there's actually two outcomes. How many total possibilities are there? Well, I'm rolling a die that has six sides and another die with six sides. And so based on our last lessons where we talked about the number of items, six times six is 36. That means there's 36 different ways that I can roll two die. Keeping in mind that some of them are going to be like this, where they're essentially counted twice, but one is the first die and one is the second die. So it's a one on the first die and a two on the second die, or a two on the first die, a one on the second die, etc. So this would be two out of 36 or just one out of 18. So I want to look at some of the probability rules with you. And some of these we'll you know, talk about in more detail in this video and some we will talk about in more detail in the next video. But I wanted to put them all on one side for you just for easy reference. So some of the probability rules, and you are probably familiar with all of these, so number one is the probability of all events in the sample space is equal to one. That one's pretty straightforward. We know that probabilities, and this is rule two, have to be between zero and one. And that means each and every event has a probability between zero and one, but the sum of all of the probabilities of events in a sample space have to add to one. So for instance, when I flip a coin, I have heads and tails, and I know that the probability of heads is one half, and the probability of tails is one half, and then the probability of the sample space, which means all of the outcomes there, is one half plus one half, which is one. So it will always work out that the probability of all of the items in the sample space is one and that each individual probability then has to be between zero and one inclusive. Uh, number three is called the complement rule. And all of that is saying is that sometimes it's easier to do the opposite problem. So for instance, let's say I wanted to find the probability that I don't roll a three. So this one again is pretty easy to do just on your own either way. So I know when I roll a die, 
it's going to be 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. So I could say the probability of not 3 is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 out of 6 total. And that certainly works. And in this case, it's just as easy to do it this way as to use the complement rule. What the complement rule says is, let's say I know the probability of a 3, I can take 1 minus the probability of a 3, and that's going to be the probability of not 3. So probability of not 3 would be 1 minus 1 sixth, which is 5 sixths. So it's 5 sixths either way, as we can tell. But again, sometimes it's easier to do the opposite problem using the complement rule. For instance, let's look at my next example where I am looking at the probability of at least one, and that is always one minus the probability of none. So this again is an opposite problem or complement rule question. This is just a very specific one. So let me give you an example. Let's say I'm rolling, um, or I'm flipping a coin three times, and I want the probability that I get at least one heads in three rolls. That's my goal. Now, if I'm not using this, then I have to figure out all of the different ways I could, that not rolls, I'm sorry, that should be flips. Getting confused with my die and my coins. So at least three flips. And if I were doing it not using my rule, I would have to essentially figure out all of the different ways that I could possibly flip three coins. So I have heads, 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 tails, heads, tails, heads, heads, tails, tails, um, tails, heads, heads, tails, heads, tails, 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 heads, tails, tails, tails. So there's eight different ways, and of course, if I was just looking for the number of different ways, um, and we'll talk about that when we get to six, but there's three events happening, and there's two outcomes each time, so two times two times two is eight, or two to the third is eight. So, and notice that's how many outcomes I came up with was eight. But if I were doing this not using rule four there, I would say, well, let's see. If I'm getting at least one heads, that's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven out of eight. But this rule says instead of doing it that way, it's easier to say, what's the probability that I get no heads, which is just this guy, tails, tails, tails. And so then I could say that this probability is one minus one out of eight, which again is seven out of eight. So I end up getting the same answer, but again, it's just another way to go about it. And quite often when you get an at least, it's gonna be way easier to do it this way. Rule five has to do with when I have only one event occurring, but I have more than one outcome that's okay with me. And so, for instance, I'm going to go back to rolling a die. Let's say I want the probability of a two or a four, which means I'm only rolling the die one time, but I'll be satisfied if I roll a two or a four. So I would just find the probability of a two plus the probability of a four. And then this last part comes into play when I have events that are not disjoint. So if I have an overlap, if I, if I could roll a die and get both a two and a four on the same roll, then I would have to do some subtraction. In this case, that's just gonna be zero because there's no way to roll a die and get both a two and a four because two and four are disjoint events. And so what I get here is one out of six plus one out of six, again, plus zero, which is two sixths or one third. So I didn't have to subtract because there was no overlap. Uh, number six can get a little bit confusing because notice I'm using that intersection sign again. 
but when I use this intersection sign here, I'm essentially talking about two events. And whenever I have two events, I'm going to be multiplying probabilities. And again, I skipped straight to the harder of the formulas. So here I included if the events were not disjoint. Here I'm going to include if the events are not independent. So probability of, say, rolling a two and then rolling a four would be the probability of rolling a two times the probability of rolling a four, assuming that I've already rolled a two. And again, in this case, this given, this is called a conditional probability. And in this case, it's the conditional part of it's really not going to matter. So I'm going to say the probability that I roll a two is one sixth. What's the probability that I roll a four, assuming I've already rolled a two? Well, me rolling a two does not have any effect on my probability of rolling a four on the next roll. And so I would get one out of 36. But there will be instances where this conditional probability will come into play, and that's one of the things we'll look at in more detail on the next video.